Hey, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It is a year of hope. Hope stands for help other people every day. And you know what? That's what North Queenslanders do. Is there any new North Queenslanders here? Oh, rubbish. I bet there's a heap of you. But honestly, we welcome you to Halo. I must say congratulations, of course, to the Australia Day Council, our great council, IPLEX, and many other people who have got behind this. Because what it's all about is celebrating us. And I mean all Australians. And in this, Australia's greatest tropical city, we celebrate our Kutharinga. Halo. The Halo of the Saint. Painted in 1962 with Peter Higgins and his mates. And you look at the paint. 62 got up. How come through dozens of cyclones our sun it stays there? It's quite simple really. It's painted with white paint and concrete. <laughs> Tonight you'll see a show that celebrates our saint, that celebrates us. And I just want to tell you couple of little stories. Firstly, I'm blessed, as I mentioned, I'm a broadcaster. I'm not an Australian broadcaster. I broadcast in the best part of Australia. Townsville, North Queensland. And it is too, because it's us. And there's many people that have made this part of the world magnificent. Pioneers. Because in any direction, 30 minutes, we're in wilderness. Any direction, 30 minutes, wilderness. On top of Kutharinga, there's a post called Jenkinson's Post. One of our great pioneers, Graham Jenkinson. And that light you see on Castle Hill, he and a rather crazy broadcaster in 1984 got hold of a little spotlight, a wartime spotlight, and shot it on that hill to show the council that we could do it. An old World War II spotlight perched up there, bringing in the bats. In fact, that's why we had to stop, because it upset a few of the bats. Bats are blind. <laughs> but we put it back up. And what you see today, thanks to the Townsville City Council, you'll see the lights on our Kutharinga. Think of Earth and the sea. I've just told you about the Earth. This magnificent Kutharinga. But what about the sea? 30 minutes in that direction. Wilderness, the Great Coral Sea. And for those that don't know, this year, 2021, 110 years ago, coming to this city, 122 souls on board a ship that doesn't exist anymore, a steamship. And this is a great northern story. It is the story of the SS Yongala. 110 years ago, on the 23rd of February, 23rd of March, 1911. 122 souls, there were 121 on the manifest. And then they discovered there was an eight-month-old baby, Elsa Marie Murray, coming to this city. It's our own Titanic. And they were lost. No survivors. It's a wonderful little passage from Ecclesiastics. Those that have no memorial and perished as if they had never been. It was lost for 40 years, but that's how much of a city on the edge of civilization we were. This was an open bridge steamship. If you get a chance, go to the Maritime Museum, read the story of the SS Yon Gala. As a broadcaster from Melbourne, I came up 37 mango seasons and I fell in love with this story. The story of William Knight, all his crew, and people who were just coming here to Townsville, lost, gone, over 40 years. 
A man by the name of Doug Tarker and Ben Crop finally found the resting place off Cape Bowling Green of the SS Yongala. Along with Doug Tarker, who ran Reeflink, I had the great privilege of learning to dive and learning about the magnificent reef, but learning about the SS Yongala. Has anyone ever dived the Yongala here? Has anyone ever actually, does anyone care? Does anyone care? You know, you, you talk about this place. We wouldn't be here without the pioneers. Yes, we've got the great gardens here. But you know, these gardens were put together by Percival Pacific Andrews. Named Pacific because his dad had a few drinks, couldn't think of any other word, and named him Pacific. And that was in Ingham. And there's a wonderful aviary named after him. All those stories, as a broadcaster in this great city, I learned. Because yes, we've got our iPads, our phones. But you know, without the past, because we'll be the past one day, we want to be remembered, we want to learn. So you learn about the SS Yongala all those years ago, along with a local company called the Dive Bell, a great man, Colin Hodson, took me for my first dive on the Yongala. Have you ever been underwater? It's scary. <laughs> but when you dive on something that was a tomb, now this is local. This is local history. A tomb of 122 people. You think of Elsa Marie Murray. And when we made it into Captain William Knight's amazing little area, because 37 mango seasons ago, there was still the captain's cabin. And we found a bottle of scotch that had been there from the 23rd of March. 1911, 110 years ago. We put it back just by the way. Also found a marble table. I wish, I wish that we had a museum for the SS Yongala and so many other great historical parts of this city so that these little ones, when they grow up, when they grow up, they can see and learn about the old steamships, the great old steamships that came to this city. In fact, Matthew Rooney was on board. You cross Rooney's Bridge. He was a timber seller in this city. So many of the old buildings here were built thanks to Matthew Rooney. Now, when you go into the history, when you learn about it, and you become extremely proud, look, that hill supposedly is hollow. Supposedly has areas where there's military equipment. Now, that's probably taken a, a little bit far, but there is a tunnel, isn't there, Berkey? Yeah. <laughs> all the way from the Queen's Hotel, all the way through to Garbutt just in case we needed it during the war years, because the Americans wanted to knock down Castle Hill and make it a causeway all the way through to Magnetical Isle. And when you get to the island, you know that it's called Magnetical Isle because Captain Cook lost his way, sort of, with a compass. He called it Magnetical Isle instead of Magnetic Isle, which his real name is Jean Benin. It didn't have a festival. These wonderful people put together festivals in our city. As a breakfast announcer at this great city, I decided to put together a festival called the Rediscovery of Magnetic Island and dress up as Captain Cook every year and arrive on the beach. Now, when I first did it, on the beach at Horseshoe Bay, that's where I was, everyone been to Horseshoe Bay? Yeah, put your hands up. The mozzies need something to eat. <laughs> Horseshoe Bay, I was supposed to arrive 
I spent $10 on an old Captain Cook outfit. But this is what this city is all about. When we have an opportunity to celebrate, we celebrate one thing, and that is lifestyle. Yes, we have a few of them upsetting things that happen in every city in the world. But we have lifestyle and we have each other. And when I arrived that I expected 200 people on the beach at Horseshoe Bay to welcome a silly old broadcaster dressed as a 200-year-old, I felt 200, 200-year-old captain. There were 5,000 people on the beach that day from all over the world just celebrating being silly. And you know, there's nothing wrong with being silly. And in the northern tropics of Australia, we can do that. And when, when Captain Cook, one day accidentally, uh, was woken up by the police actually, Captain Cook being me, uh, uh, the coppers said to me, Pricey, that moat that you're driving out there, what colour is it? I said, white. He said, well, it's not, it's green. You've stolen someone's moat. Our island had 40 mini moats, but only six keys. And I'd accidentally taken the wrong one home. That ran for 10 years. There are going to be many more festivals in this city. Make your own story. As a northerner, as we move into this great year of 2021, hope, help other people every day and enjoy life in this tropics from all of us and of course a happy australia day enjoy halo you're about to meet a most wonderful fella by the name of dave burke listen to his stories and please make your own stories too happy days i've loved talking to you happy days everyone.